Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, Church of New Destiny worldwide. We love you. We're loving you from the United Kingdom this morning. Praise the Lord. And may the Lord continue to keep you and your families in Jesus' name as you listen to this word. I pray that the Lord will bless you, will provide for you, will make a way for you, and will make you realize that his eyes are on you. You're his prized possession, his chosen people. Praise the Lord. And he fights over us and he loves you in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's go to Numbers chapter 23 and we'll read from the beginning. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to go through it as quickly as I can. Numbers 23 is about uh, Balaam or Balaam, Balaam, who was a Gentile prophet and uh, he lived in uh, Pethel of uh, Mesopotamia. All right. So. There is a king called King Balak or Balak, a Moabite king who urged Balaam to curse the Israelites. All right. So he's looking for this power. He wants to curse the Israelites. And you know that God's eyes are on the Israelites. I want you to see yourselves this morning as those children of Israel. Because you are the chosen of the Lord. You are the planting of the Lord. You are the one. Look, we're here this morning and the Holy Spirit is already here. Because we're his and he is ours. We praise his name for his presence in our midst. All right. So, and if you look through the previous chapters, you'll see that Israel had been in wilderness, just in the wilderness, just wandering. All right. And they had come, they're heading towards Canaan now. And they had come to the borders of Canaan. So they were camped by the side of the Jordan River. They were camped there, right, on the, on the edge of that land, ready to cross Jordan and enter the promised land. And I want to say to you this morning, perhaps you are that child, that child of God that is about to cross into your promised land and the enemy is already flustered. The enemy is already jealous of your future, of your destiny, already seeing that you're progressing and he doesn't like it. So what then happens, right? So Balak, Balak, the king of Moab was afraid. He was afraid. That is what happens to your enemies. They're always afraid of progress. The enemies of progress. They're always afraid of your joy. They don't want you to cross over. But God said I should tell somebody this morning, regardless of what the enemy has planned, you are crossing over in the mighty name of Jesus because you are my chosen one. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I titled this message, God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Has he made promises to you? Has, you, has he given you his word? He will bring it to pass in Jesus' mighty name. So we're looking in chapters, verses 1 to 3 how uh, 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 Balaam went to Balak, uh, chapter 23, Numbers 23, verse 1. Then Balaam said to Balak, build seven altars for me here and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did just as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, stand by your burnt offering and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me and whatever he shows me, I will tell you. So he went to a desolate height. So this is where the sacrifice and the preparation is being done to come against the children of Israel. All right. So now when the Bible says that, so he went to a desolate height, it reminded me, I don't know about other cultures. I can only talk about the United Kingdom culture and the Nigerian culture. All right. So because I've got both in me, what a privilege to be British and Nigerian. I was born in the United Kingdom, British and culturally by blood Nigerian. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And in Nigeria, we have people who go to the mountains. The desolate height is the mountains. They will say we're going for seven days to pray. There are many cultures in the Nigerian culture that are very similar to the biblical culture. All of this ram that they're killing and doing, those things happen over there as well. But these people, and there's some Christians, I don't know whether they're born again, 
but I know they claim to be Christians as well. They go on the mountain, all right? We, we go on the mountain as well in terms of, you might say, I'm going on the mountain to pray. So I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm separating myself to God. It's not necessarily a physical mountain, it's a spiritual mountain. But physically, in some parts of Nigeria, people actually go to the mountain and they could stay there for two weeks, 21 days, seven days, and they'll be praying night and day. They're actually praying. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that just reminded me, you know, that this old devil copies everything that is of God, you know. And so, uh, you know, Balaam was, was a corrupt prophet. He was corrupt. But he could contact God. There are corrupt prophets out there. He was greedy. He was ready to take money to receive the riches to put a curse on somebody else. I wouldn't say that he was a Christian. I would just say that, well, he was given a gift. You know, God gifts all of us as we come into the world. Whether you're born again or not, God gives us gifts. And this, this man is a prophet, in, a Gentile prophet at that time. Amen. So, but what he is saying to Balaam is whatever the Lord shows me, I will tell you. I can't, I can't say anything of my own. I'm not going to create my own prophecy. I'm going to give you the, whatever God has put in my mouth, which means that God is working with his mouth, but not with his heart. God can use a donkey to speak. He's not using the donkey's heart. He's using the donkey's mouth. In this same similar situation, God is going to use uh, uh, Balaam to speak to Balak. So what Balaam is saying to Balak is, look, God is greater than all these small gods, all right? And if Israel is going to be cursed, then God has to do it. God has to move. It's God that has to speak this curse. You know, and what I like about this is that this man recognizes the power of God. No matter how strong he is, no matter how powerful he is, no matter what satanic gift or whatever gift it is, divination, God is powerful. In several cultures, people consult with the com uh, some places they call them uh, uh, Sangoma, I think it's in South Africa, they call them Sangoma. In Nigeria, they'll call them Babalawo. It's the same as Sangoma, it's the same as a, divin a, di a divinator. They go and consult them and ask them to do things, all right? So God is going to now meet with Balaam. And I love God for one thing. He's not saying, Balaam, I'm not going to talk to you because you are evil. He's going to talk to Balaam. I'm going to use you to go back to that king and tell him. Because you see, Balak is a very stubborn king and he's full of anger. He if you look in chapter 22, he was on a donkey and the donkey spoke to him. God kept warning him not to do bad things, but he continued to do it. To the point where he was so angry with that donkey. He hit the donkey. The donkey began to speak back to him. This king is a stubborn king. Let's go to verse 4. And God met Balaam and he said to him, I have prepared the seven altars and have offered on each altar a bull and a ram. Then the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak and thus you shall speak. So he returned to him and there he was standing by his burnt offering. He and all the princes of Moab, praise the Lord. And he took up his oracle and said, Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me from Aram, from the mountains of the east. Come curse Jacob for me, and come denounce Israel. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? And how shall I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. There a people dwelling alone, not reckoning itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number one fourth of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my end be like his. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So there was Balaam coming back and bringing back the word of God. The enemy will do anything to bring you down. But the word of God remains standing. I want you to know that when you stand on the word, the curse can never work. It will never work, no matter how many arrows are thrown at you. Don't forget that he prepared seven altars. That's a lot of preparation for seven altars. One altar is enough, but they want to make sure that this curse will work. And he went there and God spoke to him that, look, this is not going to work at all. So, so this is what Balak was asking for. He wanted a spiritual curse against Israel. 
so that they could be defeated in the battle. The enemy wants to curse you spiritually so that you will not be strong enough in battle. We have to be strong in this hour, in, in the place of battle. We are at war. I keep saying it to Christians. We can't afford to be lazy because the enemy does not give up that easily. You know, this is what Balaam is trying to do to curse the children of Israel. But the prophet is saying, I cannot curse Israel if God has not cursed them. Who can curse those whom God has blessed? No matter what the enemy is doing against you right now, it will not succeed in the name of Jesus because you are God's blessed, you are God's chosen, you are God's separated, and Israel is distinct, unique, chosen of God. God saw nothing in them for him to put a curse on them. There is no curse, no divination against Israel. And God is saying for me to say to you, there is no divination, no curse against you that will stand in the mighty name of Jesus. And that is why when we stand in a place of praise, we worship God that every curse is broken. The power of the enemy is broken. He has no right and therefore he submits. And that's why the Bible says at the name of Jesus, every name shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord if if Balaam was in our day he would be bowing to the name of Jesus that I cannot curse these people they have done nothing wrong to their God it will never work and so he took back the word of God and saying you know what I can't do this thing who 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 who, who, who you're saying to me come and curse Jacob for me come and denounce Israel God has not denounced you God has not cursed you and we Christians must be careful with our confession because some Sometimes we complain as if God has cursed us. We complain as if God has denounced us. But the Bible is saying here, how shall I curse those whom God has not cursed? You are not under a curse. You are under the blessing of Abraham, of Isaac, of Israel. You are under the blessing of covenant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When we, when we take the communion and we remember what Jesus has done, by the blood of the lamb that is the covenant that jesus made with god that we will walk in freedom that we will walk in divine health that we will walk in divine well-being that we will become more than conquerors through him who loved us that chains will be broken over our lives that no curse no matter how many altars are built against you it will not work in the mighty name of jesus because the word of the lord is spoken and so who shall curse those whom god has not cursed hallelujah thank you lord Jesus and so he saw these people dwelling alone there are nobody amongst the nations but there's somebody before God they're a nation before God they're chosen before God they're distinct before God and therefore they're overcomers in the name of Jesus that is who you are you are distinct you are called you are chosen you are separated before God and no curse will stick on you in the mighty name of Jesus every generational curse over your lives is broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ no curse will stand against you if your father had had cancer your mother had had some illness or some sisters or whatever it will not be a portion in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we thank the Lord for giving us his blessings in Jesus name. Hallelujah. And so Balak the king could not bribe this prophet. Although this prophet loves money, he himself could not even has no power to say, look, <laughs> I will take this money. And so if, if, if Balaam could have reversed this into a curse so that he will get the money he will be able he will do it but he has no power he has no power this is where satan is in despair he's frustrated he has no power over you he has no power over your children he has no power over your home he has no power over your joy he has no power over your destiny god says i will use you regardless of what the enemy may do against you my eyes are on you so god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in christ jesus and the enemy cannot reverse them he cannot reverse the blessings of god upon your life i want to, you to see yourselves this morning as blessed god is not a man that he should lie has he spoken it will he not do it that is the god that we serve i keep saying it take the scripture and speak it over your life speak it over your situation that is the word of the lord that breaks every curse in the name of jesus hallelujah balaam could not do anything he was powerless he was powerless in the presence of god why are we different why are you different why are you distinct why are you chosen why does god decide that it's you pat that i want to use is you john that i I want to use it's you that i want to bless timmy why because our god is different we are different because our god is different
our God is different. Their God is different. Balaam's God is different. All of those altars had no power. All of those rams had no power. The shedding of animals' blood. It has no power over you, over me, in the mighty name of Jesus. So even in your village, let them be doing what they're doing. There's no curse, no divination against you that will work. No curse, because nobody can curse those whom God has blessed. I want you to say this morning, I'm blessed and not cursed in the name of Jesus. I am blessed and I am not cursed in the name of Jesus because I'm chosen by God. Israel was chosen by God for a special role. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, the plan of redemption is coming through Israel. God's purposes are coming through you. You are in a new town, a new village, a new country, a new place. And God is saying, I will perfect that which concerns you. I will fulfill my purposes in you. Anywhere you go, you can break a curse. You can break it. You know, in some areas, when we were, let me use this example. When we were young, I didn't know what a curse was. I was growing up in Nigeria there. So I lived in Nigeria until I was 17. I was born in the UK, then I lived in Nigeria until I was 17. And I remember when we moved to a particular area, my dad built a house and we moved into this area. But the neighbor across the road, although blessed, although he was, I don't understand human beings, you know. He had a huge compound. He's really blessed, but he was jealous of my dad. And what would he do? First thing in the morning, when we open our gates, there'll be a chicken, dead chicken with some blood and some sprinkle of something. He's done a sacrifice in front of our home. He has done something there just to put a curse on the family. And my parents would just tell them, get rid of that. And because we were a praying family, God saved us. Although I wasn't born again, my father was born again. My mom wasn't even born again, but my dad was the first to get born again. And because of the anointing of God upon his life and the blessing of God, we escaped that curse. That curse did not stand. That man did so many different things. You might just see something weird and you think, who put this here? It's him. Guess how this man died? When I heard the day he died, he died in one of the rooms in his home that he had dedicated to idols and demons. He died in there. Nobody knew what killed him, but I know that the demons killed him. I know that the pit that he had dug, he fell into it by his own self. I want to encourage you. Don't be afraid of the devil. Don't be afraid of demons. Don't be afraid of what they can do. Don't be running helter skelter. Oh, they're jinxing me. Oh, they put a hex on me. No, no, no. You see, we grew up in a society where it is real. In Britain here, it's hidden. You don't see people in their covens. You don't see them when they're gathered in the forest at night. You don't see what they put underneath their pillow. You don't see the dream catchers. It's not obvious to the eye, but spiritually they're working away. In the offices, they're working away. In your office, somebody can put a cup that you're not promoted. Somebody can bring food that is already sacrificed to idols to eat. That's why I'm very careful in the office. I just don't eat anything because they can bring sacrificial food to you. Be careful where you eat foods. Some have taken things that, that they don't even know about. Pray over everything that you eat because we don't know how they're prepared. In some parts of the world, even these open restaurants that people just walk into, they call them Buka in Nigeria. One day they caught a woman, her, her restaurant was just opposite a church, and after church people would flock there to go and eat. One day this woman walked into the church to make a confession that everything that she had been cooking to drive, to drive the crowds into her business, they would wee in the water that they used to cook. Listen, I'm telling you that Satan will go to any length. You see, you will see here that he's very persistent. He will use different things in different areas. I don't know what happens in McDonald's. I don't know who's making my food. I don't know what they may have put in it, what they don't. If somebody is angry, they could put a snot in your thing. You don't know. You don't know. When you go to a restaurant, don't complain too much because they'll take your food back. You don't know whether they're angry and they do something. One person has confessed it before that he's part in somebody's food. May it not be a portion in Jesus' name. I decree and I declare that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. But I want us to open our eyes to see the reality of the spiritual realm. Let us walk with our eyes open. Christians, we like to just, oh, you know, I don't like this. I don't want to hear that. You know, I don't, No, hear it. So that you are aware of it. The Bible says watch and pray. We've got to be watchful and be prayerful. Just like you've landed in a new country. You've landed in a new land, a new city. You think they don't know who you are? You think they don't want to claim that land as well? That's why we pray. 
That's why we mark the land. That's why we plead the blood of Jesus as we go along. I plead the blood of Jesus upon every part of the road that my car will tread. Because I have seen so many things. And I said to the Lord, Lord, what's going on here? Why is it that people are angry on the roads? Why is it so many accidents? He said, because there's a spirit of rage controlling the roads. I didn't know that before. That was many years back now. He said, so you must pray. You must plead the blood of Jesus against accidents. Plead the blood of Jesus upon the roads that your car will tread. Take authority. Walk in wisdom. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so God preserved Israel as a distinct nation. God has preserved you. You are preserved by the Lord, by the blood of Jesus. You are preserved in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us not say, oh, my forefathers had this, so I'm having it. My mom used to have a backache, so I have it. My mom has hypertension, so I have it. We break those curses in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not our portion. It's not your portion. It's not my portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So Israel was different because God was different, because their God is different. Their God made them a distinct nation. He has a plan. He had a plan for them. Jesus was going to come out from that from that uh, bloodline. Praise the Lord. And, and look at what Jesus brought for us. He brought us salvation. He brought us hope. He brought us light in the midst of darkness. He died for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that curse was broken finally in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. Amen. So God, God, uh, uh, God, God has promised Israel amazing things and so Balaam looked he looked and he saw how vast their camp was their size their blessing the enemy is looking at you right now that you are blessed look at your home look at your children look at your job look at what you're doing you've even got joy in the midst of adversity they're jealous of you the enemy is jealous of you and we thank God for the covenant that God made with Abraham we are the seed of Abraham we are blessed and not cursed we are mighty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One of you is equal to 10,000. One of you. The Bible says one will put a thousand to flee. Two will put 10,000 to flee. One of you will put a thousand to flee. Two of you. Imagine three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are powerful. We are vast like the children of Israel. We are chosen. We are the planting of the Lord. And we are here to take over in the mighty name of Jesus. We are here to take over. We are here to break every curse over the family. That's why you are chosen. That's why God has separated you. Because of your prayers, your children are saved. Because of your prayer, your brother, your sister is saved in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse 11 to 12. Balak was so disappointed. Balak was disappointed. He said to Balaam, what have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies. And look, you have blessed them bountifully. You know, Balak was angry. You have not only blessed them, you are blessing them very well. Oh, Father, thank you, Jesus. I took you there to curse them and you came back with blessing. And so, so Balaam then answered and said, must I not take heed to speak what the Lord has put in my mouth? The king of Moab was very disturbed. He wasn't happy at all because he had paid money. He had given good deal to Balaam that you know what? Just like the devil would come. If you will serve me, I will bless you. That's what the devil does. That's why people sell their souls to him. If you will bow down to me, I will make you the best singer in the world. I will turn you into a Michael Jackson. I will turn you into this. You will make so much money. Meanwhile, there is death underneath. There's a curse there. But Balaam spoke as a true prophet. A true prophet, but a corrupt prophet. He was corrupt. All right. I want you to see when you look on YouTube and you see somebody say uh, this prophet and that prophet, they could have a gift. The gift of God is without repentance, but they could be very corrupt, which is what we're seeing in these last days. We're seeing the manifestation of corrupt prophets. So the king of Moab promised Balaam plenty of money. But Balak is saying, thank you for the money, but I can only say what God is saying. All right. So let's go into Verses 13. Then Balak said to Balaam, please come to please come with me. I want you to see the strategy of the enemy here. So Balak did not give up that first time. Okay, we failed. Good, no problem. Let's start again. Let's go back again. He says, Please come with me to another place from which you may see them 
See them as part, the children of Israel. You shall see only the outer part of them and shall not see them all. Cast them for me from there. You see, what Balak is doing is that I want you to see from a different angle. I want you to see from a different perspective. You saw the vast camp of the children of Israel. But on this occasion, I'm just going to let you see a little bit of them. So that you're not feeling intimidated. You're not feeling intimidated. I'm going to change this positioning where, where you're standing. I'm going to change the way you see what you see. You're seeing the big camp. You're seeing that, you know, they're blessed and all of that. But I want you to see differently so that you can cast them for me. So that the prophecy will change. How many times has the enemy come back again and again? He doesn't give up. When you look at Jesus, after he had fasted and prayed for 40 days, he came out of that wilderness and he was tempted of the enemy. First time, second time, third time, three times the devil came back. And then when the Bible says he even left him after that third time and Jesus said, get the hands from me. He left only for an appointed time. Another time. He doesn't give up. So why must we give up when the devil don't give up on me? Why should I give up? I'm going to hammer him. I'm going to pressure him. I'm going to cast him out. I'm going to break his curses. I'm going to send back those curses back to the sender. Back in the name of Jesus. I'm going to remove this sickness from my body. You go in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I break every arrow. I break every curse. That's why we pray warfare prayers. Because as you're growing, as you're winning souls for Christ, as you're advancing in the kingdom of God, the enemy don't want you to progress. They can see the blessing. You're a vast army. Your camp is big. You're filled with blessed possessions. You're fruitful. And the enemy is is looking at you jealously. Can you imagine if he can take all that camp under his own wings? Look at how many demons will be operating out there. But God says, no, these ones are mine. God is telling me to tell somebody this morning, you are mine. I called you by name. I chose you. You are my prized possession. You are the treasure in my heart. You are the apple of my eye. And no weapon formed, formed against you can prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, it shall never prosper because you are not under a curse. You are under my divine blessing. You are under my divine appointment. You are under my word. You are under my spirit. And my spirit is the spirit of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the word of God will never fail concerning you, concerning your children, concerning your family, concerning your job, concerning the ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the prophecy of God over your lives will not change. No matter how much the enemy tries, God has spoken and so shall it be. How many times has God reassured us that trust me, believe in me, don't allow your faith to fail. I have prayed that your faith will not fail. Don't let it fail. Stand sure. Stand sure on the promises of God and it will never fail. This is what God is saying to us today. Stand sure on my promises and it will never fail. Praise the Lord. You see, Balaam, Balaam was impressed by the size of Israel. And so this man is saying, you know what, let me change where he is now. Let me, let me just allow him to see a little portion of Israel so that we can put another curse. So Balak was desperate to, to curse Israel. Can you imagine the extent to which the enemy will go? In your workplace, they do the same. They're so bent. No matter how nice you are, they don't want to know. When the devil is out there chasing you, he doesn't want to know. When you look at the story of the children of Israel, how the enemy pursued them, God had to part the Red Sea. They did not give up. And even after God parted the Red Sea, they still went in there with them. This is what I'm trying to show us that, look, you are already in your blessing, but the enemy has come in there. They will drown in that Red Sea in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your enemies will drown in that Red Sea in Jesus' name. That curse is their portion and not yours. Amen. And so when we continue now, verse 14, so he brought him to the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Remember, so seven altars. So those are seven bulls and rams. 14, they've offered 28 animals. 28. In this, by the second one, because they're, they're 14. So he brought him to the field and built seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. The same thing that they did before, they're doing again. A bull and a ram. Seven of them. That's 14 animals. Plus the last sacrifice makes it 28. You see the extent to which the enemy will go. They will kill chickens. They will kill rams. They will kill them just to be shedding blood anyhow. But the blood of Jesus speaketh greater things than the blood of Abel. The blood of rams, 
the blood of bulls can never, can never have an effect on the children of God. The curse is broken by the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the King of Kings, the blood of the Lord of Lords. You are God's prized possession. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. God is not a man that he should lie. And he has never lied, he will never lie. Concerning you, you are overcomers in Christ's name, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And so Balaam responded to Balak and he said, Stand here, verse 15, by your burnt offering while I meet the Lord over there. Then the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go back to Balak and thus you shall speak. <laughs> Glory be to God. Go back. Church of New Destiny, go back. Go back to the curse and prophesy against it. Go back to those negative words and prophesy against it. Go back to the curse of sickness, the curse of headaches, the curse over the ministry, the curse over the children. Go back to that curse and speak the prophecy of God. Speak the word of God over it. Praise the Lord. And so he came to him there. And there he was, standing by his burnt offering. And the princes of Moab were with him. And Balak said to him, what has the Lord spoken? Can you imagine? These are great men. These are distinguished men. Princes are distinguished men. You can't say Prince Charles now. No matter what your opinion is, you will stand up and greet him with such reverence. You will greet him. You will not be rude to him. You will respect his office. You will respect that position. These are princes here. The king is here. The princes are here. They're waiting for the outcome of what will happen. And so then uh, uh, Balaam took up the oracle and he said, rise up, Balak. This is what God is saying now. Here, listen to me, son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie. Right there, God is rebuking Bail Balaam. That God is not a man that he should lie. Has he said and will he not do? This is wonderful. Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Glory be to God. Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. I can't reverse it. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob. What he's saying there is that there's no sin in Israel. They're not sin. They're not doing anything contrary to the will of God. So why should they be cursed? He has not observed iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. You see, where there's wickedness, there's a curse. Where there's wickedness, there's a curse. Let's not be wicked to one another. Because there's a curse right behind it. Some sicknesses are just born out of wickedness. People being wicked, but they will pretend like they're not. And then they evoke a curse on themselves. May every curse be broken in Jesus' name. And he says here, the Lord God, the Lord his God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. How many of us know that the shout of a king is among us right now? The shout of a king. Hallelujah, Jesus. The shout of more than a conqueror. The victorious shout of God. The shout of the king of Israel. The king of kings, the first and the last, is with us. God brings them out of Egypt. He has strength like a wild ox. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. For there is, verse 23, for there is no sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, oh, what God has done. Look, a people rises like a lioness and lifts itself up like a lion. It shall not lie down until it devours the prey and drinks the blood of the slain. Listen, listen. God is teaching Balak. God is rebuking him. God, is, no, I said God rebuked Balaam in that fact. No, it's Balak that God is rebuking. Please beg your, beg your pardon. It's, it's Balaam that God is rebuking. That, look, I am not a man. The first thing that the enemy must recognize is that God is not a man. And that is why God says to us as his children, your fight is not against flesh and blood. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. So when you enter into spiritual warfare, it's spiritual. It's not physical. Whoever is fighting you is fighting your God. 
You see, what happened is that God showed himself when Balak wanted to fight Israel spiritually. He had attempted and they had failed. Israel had been overcoming through the wilderness. And now the next step is to use, like in our day now, biological warfare is being used against humanity. So there's no more like we're going to shoot you with a gun down the road. We're going to, you know, kill you that way. But biological warfare, what Balak is doing here is spiritual warfare. He has fought the physical. He has lost. He has seen that Israel is strong. God is with them. But he's very stubborn, a very angry man, a very annoying man. So he decides, you know what? I'm going to take another step. I'm going to attack them spiritually. You and I know some of you from other parts of the world. And I'm sure in Britain too, it's just that, you know, we don't see it in the surface. Look, when somebody puts a curse on you, things begin to go the other way. It begins to go the other way. Things begin to go wrong. All sorts of things just happen just like that. You who you used to be strong. Now you're feeling a headache here. You're feeling weak here. Something just happened. Uh, the doctor just said this. Somebody in your job just said that. Your car is playing up. Things just begin to happen. But that curse is broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. What you need to do is, Lord, if this is a curse, I break it in Jesus' mighty name. Because there's no curse against Jacob. There's no divination against Israel. Glory be to God. The, 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 the Balaam says, the Lord God is with me and the shout of a king is among them. Praise the Lord. God is not a man that he should lie for there is no sorcery against Jacob. There's no sorcery against you. There's no divination against Israel. There's no divination against you. God is not a man that he should lie. He cannot be bribed. He cannot be impressed with riches. This man has come with his money. How many rich people go and look into divination? They're looking for more power. They're looking for more power. Right now, there's a war between, between the, the, the supernatural and the natural. There's a war between the children of God and the children of Satan. You can see that we're at war. We're at war. But it's a spiritual war. No matter how much we protest, that is good. We must take action. But the best action we can take is in fasting, is in praying, is in worshiping God, is in praying over the nations, is in taking charge of our policies, is in breaking the curses. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Secondly, there the Bible is saying God doesn't lie. God is saying, I will not change my mind regarding Israel. You came back a second time with bulls and rams on seven altars. My mind isn't changed. <laughs> There's no divination against Israel. There's no curse against Israel. I have not observed any iniquity. I haven't seen any wickedness in them. I am with Israel. My shout is with them. God's shout is with you this morning. For there's no sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. That is what you must say. For there's no sorcery against me, no divination against me and my family. Every curse is broken. The curse of sickness, the curse of this, the curse of that. You are broken in the name of Jesus because my God does not lie. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't repent as man does. He will not repent. He will not repent. The Bible says that, has he said it in verse 19? Has he said and will he not do? This is our God. If he said it, he will do it. If he said it, he will do it. Man of God, has God spoken to you? Woman of God, has God promised you? Has he spoken to you? If he said it, he will do it. Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? He said, you know, Balaam said, behold, I have received a command to bless <laughs> God is commanding your enemies to bless you. The Bible says that your enemies will be at peace with you and they shall in turn become your helpers. God is commanding your enemies right now to bless you. They will bless you by force. It's a command. It's a command from our God to be a blessing to Israel. And what is God saying there? I will perform my word. If I have spoken, I will perform my word. I will bring it and I will make it good for you. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. If I promised you, I will make it good in Jesus' name. So what Balaam is saying is, look, it's not within my power to curse. It's not within my power to bless because God is using my mouth. My heart is saying something else. But right now I'm in submission to the will of God. Your enemies will submit to the will of God. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. All he can do 
is report on God's report. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord, the report of healing, the report of deliverance, the report of hope. We shall believe the report of the Lord. When God blesses you, nobody can reverse it. He said, he has blessed, verse 20. Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. The enemy cannot reverse the curse. Sorry, the enemy cannot reverse the blessing of God upon your life. If God says you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, if God says you are healed by the stripes of Jesus, hold on to your healing. Hold on to your deliverance. If God says I've made provision for you, I've given you a new job, hold on to that. If he's blessed your business and he keeps telling you, don't look at what you see. Don't look at what you see. Listen to my word. Hold on to my word. If I have blessed you, the enemy cannot reverse my blessings concerning you. He cannot curse you. You're already blessed. Praise the Lord. And why did God declare Israel to be blessed? Because they were walking in righteousness. There was no wickedness in them. There was no iniquity in them. Where there's righteousness, holiness, there's blessing. There is blessing. That's why we must live a repentant life. That's why we must not associate with darkness. That's why we must not compromise. Because the blessings of God remain. Even when you look in Deuteronomy 28, it says, if you do these things, these blessings will follow you. If you do not do these things, if you're disobedient, these curses will be evoked. This is what happens. This is what happens. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 31. Let me just quickly go there. Romans chapter 8. Verse 31, this is a promise from God to all of us this morning of his everlasting love, of his goodness and his faithfulness towards us. Pro Romans 8, 31 says, what then shall we say to these things? Glory be to God. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. The Bible says, no. Let's go to verse 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, not the curse of Balak, not the curse of Balaam. Nothing shall separate you. Nothing shall separate your children. No one can be against you. If God is for Israel, God is for you. God is for you and not against you. God is for me and not against me. God is for your ministry. God is for you and not against you. What he does not want is wickedness. He doesn't want iniquity. He wants to bless us and we're already blessed in him. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you. We bless you. So what God is saying there is there's the blessing of obedience. See, when you're obedient, the blessings will come in automatically. When we're disobedient, that is when people walk under the curse. Praise the Lord. We're blessed in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to say to yourself, I am blessed. I, laddie, I'm blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So there's a covenant in operation. It's a covenant of blessing from God. You are under the covenant of blessing from God. No man shall be able to curse you all the days of your lives in Jesus' mighty name. No man shall be able to curse us in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so this is what God is saying through Balaam. You can't curse my children. You can't curse them. You can't curse Ladi. You can try, but you can't. That is it. I had a friend many years ago, a friend that I went to school with. And she got married to, it was her first marriage. 
but that man's second marriage and he's had all his children and all of that and he is a rich man you know big huge house many rooms i went on holiday i went to visit my friend and she was the only one in this house i went to the toilet and i thought wow this house is too big if i'm here i'll be asking this man scale it down i don't want to live in some lonely mansion you know you go to the toilet and the spiders there or something you know, they, 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 they co the co-inhabitors are, you know, spiders and you can have 10 dogs, but it's still lonely. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, we want blessings that God will help us to manage. I don't want 10 houses. I will give nine out or eight. I'll make income from one and that's it. Praise the Lord. May the Lord continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, so God is saying, this your curse will have no effect on my children so when I went to visit my friend she told me a story she said one day she came down because her husband wasn't in the bedroom and she was wondering where is he he's, he's not in, 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 in sleeping next to me so she went downstairs and she saw him with candles all around a round circle in the middle of the night with some other person chanting and doing stuff which she wasn't aware of before you know sometimes you just go and sleep by the morning they've cleared off and he will come in pretending like nothing has happened so she didn't say anything about it she left it and then one day somebody came to her home whilst her husband had traveled and said somebody has asked me to come and ask you please come and see this old man is asking for you this old man is asking for you please come with me she went with this person and when they got to the old man the old man said ah you're so young I couldn't do what your husband was asking me to do to you because he was asking me to do something against you you see you see that husband has gone to Balaam to put a curse on his wife she's gonna be a living sacrifice right there so that he will get richer and richer this is what Balak wanted to become stronger to defeat Israel you know there's evil in this world there's evil in this world and the man said go your way because I cannot do this to you but this girl's mom is born again my mom led her to christ she's not a strong christian she's just there she's not one of those that will go to church every sunday but my mom led her to christ and i believe that the covenant of of the blood of jesus was working on her behalf and that sacrifice could not be done no matter where the enemy takes your name today no matter what he wants to do against you, it will not prosper. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. For God is not a man that he should lie. God is asking me to reassure somebody that I will frustrate every plan of your enemy in the name of Jesus. I will frustrate those who want to frustrate you. I will trouble those who want to trouble you. God will trouble your Balak. God will trouble your Balaam. God will trouble those who want to trouble you because you're already blessed. I will frustrate them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. What did Balaam see? When he saw the children of Israel, he saw that they were protected. You are protected. You are under divine covenant of protection. Under the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to know who we are in Christ Jesus. We are blessed. We are covered. We are more than a conqueror. We are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. Glory be to God. To, you're so powerful to the extent that when you decree a thing, the Bible says, it shall come to pass. Decree a thing and it shall come to pass. When you begin to decree that my children are blessed, I am blessed. The ministry is blessed. The souls are blessed. They shall not die, but they shall live and declare the works of the Lord. The people of God are impacted. Wherever I go, I bring the life of Christ. Look, let me tell you, it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus you will make a difference in this world we will make a difference in this world in the mighty name of jesus christ when you get to heaven you'll be surprised you'll be shocked at how huge your crown is let us keep running this race let us keep worshiping god let us keep blessing him let us keep walking under his anointing let no wickedness be found in us let no iniquity be found in us but let us walk in that covenant blessing of god in jesus mighty name let's continue in romans 8 38 the apostle is saying for i am persuaded that neither death nor life glory be to god nor angels nor principalities 
nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen, amen, and amen. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. That's what Romans is saying. Who shall lay a charge against God's elect? Who is it that is accusing you? The Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He will come and point a finger at you. When you're trying, he will tell you you're not trying enough. When you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're asking God for mercy, he will bang your head that you're a sinner. You can never be forgiven. When you're praying, he will try and distract you. But God is saying there's no charge against you. I have not come to accuse you. Satan has come to accuse you. I have come to break the curse and that accusation over your life. I have justified you. You are not condemned, for there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, the curse is broken. God is not a man that he should lie. Glory be to God. In Christ we died. In Christ we have risen again. Glory be to almighty God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And because Christ is at the right hand of God, we are sat with him. So God covers us with his presence. This is what this is saying in Numbers 23. Go back and study it. You'll even get more revelation than me. You will get more revelation than me. There's always more in God. There's always more in the word of God. God pres God's presence brings peace to us. The children of Israel didn't even know anything was going on. Can you imagine? They were just in their camps. You're just living your life peacefully. The presence of God gives peace. You're living your life peacefully and the wicked have no rest. Satan is going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. He has come to steal, to kill and to destroy. God asked him when he presented himself with the angels in Job. Said, where are you said from going to and fro? There's no rest in him. A God that neither sleeps nor slumbers says that I should tell you that he's not a man, that he should lie. Neither the son of man, that he should repent. Has he said it? And shall he not do it? Whatever God has spoken to you, if he has spoken it, he will make it good. Praise the Lord. What God is saying is, my character is not the character of man. Don't judge me. Don't look at me. Don't put me down at the same level of a man. I'm not a man. And I don't lie like they do. They will promise you things, but they will not deliver. They will tell you good things, but they're never there for you. God is saying that I should tell you today, I am there for you. I'm standing by you. You are under my divine covenant of protection. You are under my divine covenant of healing, of deliverance. You have hope. I've got the, the, the character. I am consistent. You've got the consistency of God. The Bible says, great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, your mercies I see. Morning, every morning, there's mercy. There's faithfulness of God abounding towards us. God is not a man that he should repent. He's faithful towards you and I, and he will remain faithful until eternity. Listen, you are not condemned. Listen, you are not guilty. You are not guilty because the blood of Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. You are protected. You are under divine covenant of peace, of joy, of love. Angels watch over you right now. They're all around your home, all around your family. As you go out, the angels have gone before you. As you come in, they've come there. God is capable. He's capable of doing fantastic things. He's more than enough for us. El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. He's more than enough. Anything that you need is in him. Can you imagine? Somebody was broke yesterday, and today he has no debts. Wow, what an awesome God. What an awesome God. That is what God can do. That's what God can do. One minute you are in that wilderness and you're thinking, where's my manna going to come from? And the bills are haunting you, chasing you. Bela, Bela, the curse of the world is chasing you. And the Lord said, you know what? I'm going to set you free. I'm going to set you free from this curse. He opens a door that no man can shut. You walk into that door and the blessings begin to flow. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God says, I will make it good. Have I said it? I will do it. Have I spoken it? I will make it good. That is my capability. I'm capable of delivering. I'm capable. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. It says, For I am the Lord. I change not. 
I am the Lord. I change not. He does not change. That's why we are not consumed. Because God is his word. His word is his bond. He's capable of doing exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever think or imagine. That is our God. Hallelujah. He says, for I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Glory be to God. We have hope. God cannot lie. In Titus chapter 1 verse 2, it says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. God cannot lie. He's not a man that he should lie. Glory be to God. And I'm going to leave you with the fact that God's presence is with you all the time. Verse 21. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Another version says, he has not observed iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen perverseness, wickedness in Israel. The Lord, his God is with him. The Lord, your God is with you. This is what I'm living with you this morning. The Lord, your God is with you. And the shout of a king is among them. The shout of a king is among you. The devil, when he hears that shout, the shout of praise, the shout of worship, the shout of victory, the shout of hallelujahs. That's the shout of a king. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. 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 The shout of a king is amongst us, is with us. When we sing and we worship, that's the shout of a king is with us. And demons tremble. Anytime you're worshiping, you cannot find a demon around. I'm telling you. My brother can play fantastic piano. He plays the drums, he plays the piano, and he plays the guitar. And I'm telling you, when he's playing me, I just want to sing. And I know that God is asking us, bring your instruments out. Bring your voice out. Don't let the enemy mute you from singing worship, from singing the shout of a king. Sing aloud, shout aloud. You will see they will not be there. Your day will be wonderful. Your steps will be springing. Praise the Lord. I like it when people dance. Because in heaven, the angels dance. God inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people. That's why I love, you know, oh my goodness. When I go to these places and they take the garment and they begin to worship our king, you know, regally. And you know, you see them twisting here, twisting there. Oh, Father, we thank you. We bless you. Our king is coming in glory and in majesty. Every eye will see. Every eye will see the king. Hallelujah. And you begin to worship. You begin to, you don't know when you've forgotten about that headache you don't know when that pain has gone you don't know when that depression that wanted to come that great cloud just disappears god is telling me to tell somebody bring your instruments out and worship me worship me like you've never done before bring your voice out and worship me and worship me worship me with your children play play games play games of dancing with them in the presence of god jesus is he said unless you be like a little child you cannot enter the kingdom of god Sometimes in my bedroom, I waltz with Jesus. I say, Jesus, I love you so much. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the enemy is mad. Crazy. Thank you, Lord. Are you going to do that this week? Are you going to just waltz with Jesus? Knowing that the curse is broken. The curse of Balaam. The curse of ba ba Balak is broken. Even when uh, Haman wanted to hang Mordecai. God protected Mordecai. Haman got hanged in that very place that he prepared for Mordecai. Your enemies will hang in the air. They will hang there. Leave them alone and let God deal with them. Whilst Israel was oblivious of what was going on, God was dealing with their enemies. Listen, God is dealing with all your enemies in Jesus' name. You be silent and just worship him. Don't go and defend yourself. The Lord has already spoken. If I said it, I would do it. I'm not a man that I should lie. So you stay under the umbrella. Stay under the divine protection. Stay under his peace. Stay under the divine covenant of the blood of Jesus. And we'll overcome us. Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be blessed in Jesus' name. If you're listening to me for the first time, I want you to know that the presence of God brings pardon. 
He gives us pardon. He pardons us. And I want you to know that God will pardon all our sins. If you come with a repentant heart and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, today I come before you. I want to change my heart. I want you to protect me from all of these curses of the world, the curses of sickness, the curses of evil, the curses of wickedness. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm tired. The curse of death, sudden death, just comes like that. It's not your portion. Come under the umbrella of a new covenant in Christ Jesus and you are protected. Your family will be protected. As you come to Jesus and you begin to pray for your family, they will come under the same protection that you will begin to experience. You will begin to experience peace. You will not be afraid any longer. Anxiety will leave you. Even if it wants to come, it will have to go under the blood of Jesus. Will you pray after me? Lord Jesus, I come before you this morning. I come to repent of my sins. I ask you, please forgive me of my trespasses. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. But today I've heard your word and I want to change. I want to change in my heart. I want to change in my life. Today, Lord Jesus Christ, I say that I'm sorry of my old ways. From today, I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. And I ask you to take lordship of my life. I give my will to you. Lord, let your kingdom come in my heart and let your will be done from today and forevermore in Jesus' name. Let me abide in your peace. I need your peace. Give me your peace, Jesus, and teach me by the power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit. From today, I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. This is family now. We're one family by the grace of Almighty God. And I thank God for your life. Uh, I want you to find a way of going to a Bible believing church. Pray. Ask God. Lead me to a Bible believing church. If you want to join us online, you can email us at church of new destiny. Church of new destiny at gmail.com. And God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening to us. God bless you. Amen.